guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Melinda. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys some of my DIY home decor stuff that I made. So I've been really wanting to incorporate some more art into our living room, but once we started shopping, we realized how expensive just a single piece of art actually was. And then on top of that, I was just having trouble finding exactly what we wanted locally and it was just a struggle. So I went to Pinterest to see if I would be able to DIY some of these things myself. And then Brian actually built us a little floating shelf and I decided to just create some pieces of art and put it all on the floating shelf and just basically do everything ourselves. So if you're interested in seeing how we made the DIY wall decor or our DIY wall art, whatever you want to call it, then just keep watching. Okay guys, so for this project, you're gonna need picture frames. We thrifted ours, but you can also get cheap ones from the dollar store. The next thing you're gonna need is paper. We chose watercolor because it's more durable so it wouldn't wrinkle when we painted it. The next thing is paint. We got four acrylic paints in total for this project, two apple barrel paints in the shades Territorial Beige and Khaki, one Americana paint in black, and a Premier paint in Burnt Sienna. You also need brushes. We got Artist Loft brushes, but I don't recommend these. They shed a lot, but they are cheap so they work a paint palette a pencil we bought an exacto knife but ended up using scissors instead so the first thing we did is went to goodwill to find cheap frames because at target or even tj maxx frames are anywhere from 12 to 30 dollars each and at goodwill they're typically a dollar each one of ours the wood frame was five dollars but that was the most expensive one all the other ones were a dollar or even 25 cents so I was looking for simple frames that didn't have any type of decorative or ornate detailing on them. I wanted every frame to be smooth and simple so that they would all go together more cohesively. So these are the frames that we ended up buying. Next, I went to my Pinterest board that I created titled Gallery Wall for Living Room. I'm always searching Pinterest and adding various inspiration pictures to pull from. That way, when the time comes to start a project, I already have options. So I went through and screenshotted all of my favorite pictures that I thought would be fairly simple to recreate. Then I took all the frames that we bought and laid them out in the order that I thought I would like them on the shelf and ended up only using six of the frames that we bought. So once I had the six frames we were going to use, I let Brian go through the screenshots of the art pieces that I had selected and let him pick out his six favorites. We marked those as favorites in my phone so that they'd be saved to a separate folder for quick referencing later on. So next we decided what pictures would look best in each frame based on the color that the picture was going to be and then the color of the frame and then the size of the picture and all of that. So I wrote out a little description of the art and sat it with each frame so that when the time came to create the art, I could just grab the frame with the description of what picture went with it so I wouldn't get confused or make the picture the wrong size and then have to start over. Next, I took apart the frame and removed the cardboard back to trace for sizing. I thought it would be easier to cut this with my X-Acto knife, but I ended up not putting enough pressure on the paper in fear that I would cut through too many sheets at once by mistake. So I ended up just tracing the back and then cutting it out with scissors. Then I took a much needed coffee break of course. Oh, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. So this first drawing was supposed to be pretty random and there isn't any way to really sketch it out with a pencil so I just went for it being mindful that I wanted to keep about a one inch border around the entire piece of paper. So I basically just made random blobs with the black trying to make them go in different directions and look as non-uniform as possible. Again, I want to mention I don't recommend these brushes. They shed after almost every brush stroke, but they did get the job done and they were pretty cheap. So it's all good, but just a fair warning. So here's my first finished piece. I really, really love how this one turned out. For this next one, I did want to sketch out the picture first, but I couldn't get the proportions right or I'd accidentally draw them too close to the center of the paper with too big of a gap around the border and we didn't like the way it was looking so I ended up starting over by making a stencil that was purposefully not proportionate and I would just flip it back and forth each time I wanted to draw the shape again just to make it look a little bit less uniform 
Then I just filled that in with the burnt sienna shade. So this is Brian's art, but he didn't want me filming too much because he had to be extremely precise with it and it was making him a little bit nervous. So on to the next one. This one I also sketched out first because it was pretty challenging. For this picture, they actually had about five different shades going on and I only bought four shades of paint and I actually didn't think that any of the shades matched the original picture. So I ended up mixing every color together to get the desired shade. That way I'd have even more variation. So I would mix the beige with the burnt sienna to make it a little bit lighter or I would take the burnt sienna and mix it with the black to get more of a deeper burnt sienna shade. And I just did that for each individual color that I needed. So I can't really tell you which shades I used for what because I mixed them all. For this rainbow, the main thing I'll say is that I was going for more of an organic effortless, almost messy shape. I didn't want to make it look perfectly even on all sides, so I just roughly drew out the general shape of it. I like this more effortless look better whenever I found pictures of this rainbow style of art on Pinterest, but this filming is horrible, so I'm going to move on to the next thing. So I don't know if I mentioned this already, but Brian actually made this hanging shelf for us. We really struggled to find an affordable option for a hanging shelf that was as big and as thick as we wanted it to be and also the right color and style. They were insanely expensive, like several hundred dollars and he was able to build this for fairly cheap. So he hung the shelf and then I just styled the shelf and we actually didn't use all of the art pieces that we made on this shelf. We kind of spread them out throughout the house a little bit and then I pulled in a few pictures that I had made previously, like this flower picture for example. I made it a few months ago and I really liked the way that it looked and then I just kind of staggered the black pictures with the colored pictures and kind of made them alternate a little bit so I wouldn't have all of the colored pictures grouped together and all the black and white pictures grouped together. Then I actually bought this cactus picture at TJ Maxx, so I'm kind of cheating, sorry. But I also added this faux ivy plant that I actually bought in a thrift haul. I will link that video in the cards or down below if you wanna check that out. So yeah, that's the completed shelf. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up and let me know if you wanna see more DIY decor videos in the future. I'll see you guys in my next video, bye.